What? You are still here? Boy, you do impress me. All right. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna focus on the smart component. So when we open the app where we have the list component and then I open the TS file, I can see quite a few ton, like uh, code smells here. So first of all, when I open a smart component, I would like to name it like it is a smart component. So it has some domain logic. Um, but okay, we're gonna get to that. Then the second thing, I wanna see observables. When I see arrays like this, it's a terrible mistake. It's because a lot of times, the, so the observables were made to be reactive, right? And when we don't have this, we just set it inside. We invite a lot of problems. It's the root of all evil. So um, like with the re-rendering, before you know, you have to put like a change detector reference in here just to, you know, do it. it it's just, it's very bad, never do it. Always use observables in a smart components. How do I know it's smart component? It's because it has a service. So also the service here injected is a little bit, like it's violating the dependency inversion, but it's okay. And then here we go. Here is a sherry on a, on a top. Here, figure it out. So this is imperative programming. I mean, it's, Terrible. It's like jQuery stuff, you know, like jQuery died 10 years ago. Like, don't do it anymore. So this is bad and this is even worse. I mean, what we do here is we find the reference and we control the data on that service from the, the, the smart component. I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, you should never do it. It's, it's terrible. All right. So I'll show you how to do it better. All right, so I just created a new folder called UI. Uh, this is where I wanna store all my UIs, all my uh, presentational and um, you know smart components and stuff. So I will go ahead and use the Angular schematics for it. And then I'm gonna see, generate the new component uh, inside the UI folder. And I'm gonna call it um, items component. Um, why? Why is it items component? It's because if you think about it, it returns items, right? It deals with this item array. I mean, I don't agree with the word item for now, but uh, for now it will be okay. Um, um, yeah, it should be a tree, really. But we didn't touch the domain part yet, so just bear with me. All right, so I go to this uh, UI component and then I have this spec file, right? It's already generated, but I'm different than the previous guy. I'm actually going to write code in here. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that um, I fetch uh, the data from someone. So the, let me show you the most naive way. Uh, the most naive way is to provide my service and the service I just created. So check it out. What I can do is I need to do the test uh, sorry, it's called item service. Great. And because I provide something that has all the providers, I should also provide its own stuff. Uh, and what it requires me to do is to also provide the HTTP client module. Uh, yeah, and now you can see, I hope you can see a problem. I mean, my tests become much more difficult to maintain. It's because I don't only maintain the, uh, the dependency of that uh, smart component. I also maintain the dependencies of those dependencies. So try to put like things like state and stuff. You're gonna like be very coupled. So this is not optimal. So what I'm, what I can do is to use a, um interface so um it's a little bit different but think about it this way so instead of having an item service like this what i could have is something called um i could provide a injection token and this will be get items injection token and then here i can uh, provide the implementation and for now I can say use value which pretty much is just a static stub and in here I I know what the get item should do is to have a method called get items 
and that should be a, a, uh, a row function with pretty much like an empty array, it doesn't matter. All right, so now I need to create that token. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward because ideally I can do it in here in the infrastructure back. Um, and then I can create something called uh, items. To the, well, I can call it token, but TS. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and in here I want to export it. So I want to say export const get items, which will be inject token, injection token. And then I want to provide it with some sort of an interface. So let me define it. Get items and it will have a get items and it will return an observable of item array. You see, it doesn't take a lot more time. I mean, it's gonna pay off rather quickly. And then in here I have to provide a unique name and you can just use this one or I can use this one. It doesn't matter. I actually like to use this one. Oh, and I forgot the new. All right, so now I have injection token. Um, so in here, uh, what I can do is to call that injection token. And also in my service, I should really implement that interface. Cool, look at that. How cool is that? It's pretty cool actually. So now my smart component will not know about the service it gets to call. So in order to like, let me show it to you. So I like to have my text on the right side and then on the left side, I'm gonna have implementation. So because I've used this injection token, now I can actually use it here. Get items and it's a private. Get items get items cool that should work let me let me have a look mm, probably didn't detect the recent the recent stuff all right so you see it's pretty cool is because now my item component doesn't know about like the infrastructure layer behind it and technically uh, this can be implemented by anything so if oh here we go we pass so if we want to include things like um store or ngrx you know the type of store whichever store ngx says whatever you want to do uh, or maybe your own homegrown state or maybe you want to use a cqrs approach or whatever it's now it's cool because the ui doesn't know how it fetches the data so it's pretty cool it's a very very powerful tool and it helps me with my unit testing as well okay so <clears throat> here we go um what is my expectation well i know uh, what I can, it's pretty straightforward actually. What I would like to do is, I would like to, for now, make sure that it uh, should uh, get items. Simple as that. And look how powerful is it right now. What I can do is, I can say a component. I'm probably gonna call engine in it, right? And once this is done, I would like to, oh, I forgot that we should actually, so this data here is pretty static. So what we can do is, uh, we, we could already stab it here, that will be called a stab, but I like uh, the mock approach. So we can do the spy on, and then we're gonna say, a, uh, oh, sorry, I have to actually fetch it first. So let service will be of type my interface gets items and in here I can do service equals test path inject gets items okay so now I have my service so I can spy on it and I can say whenever a service get items is called then you should return value. What value? Well, you should return observable. So I'm gonna use the off operator. And then let me make it a data, so single item. So it's gonna be like this for now. 
Um, and as you probably recall, an item contains of ID. It contains of title, just a title, or well, item one. And then it consists of parent ID. And this is a single node that only is a root node. So that's it. Okay, so once I have this one, now I can return it here. That's pretty cool. And then what I can do, uh, I can uh, subscribe to items observable that doesn't exist yet and, and subscribe to it. And then uh, here we're gonna get items. And then I can say that expect items.length to equal single single item dot length. It's a bit stupid because I know it's single item, so I should have put one. But generally um, I, I might change that variable pretty soon. So this is why. Let me have a look. Uh, I have some uh, it should be it's not assignable to item. Oh, because it, oh yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> this is something we should definitely talk about eventually. Uh, but yeah, you can see the parent is not required, the children that's required. <sighs> Don't get me started. This is terrible modeling of the, of the data. But again, okay, so that's pretty much what I expect. So we have a failing test, right? I mean, oh, and one more thing I would like to add is the don callback. Oops. Okay. So you can clearly see the items don't exist on the component. So we should actually go ahead and build that. So let's just do the items, uh, which is an observable of item array cool all right so that that's really what it is i mean of course i'm failing is because i don't return so this is a test that i want to be passing so what can we do well the easiest thing is to copy paste what has happened before so inside the list thingy i will have uh, this piece of code Okay, so in engine init, I wanna return that and okay, except that this actually gets items. Yeah, and as, it, as I told you, this is imperative programming. So here, hear me out. You don't wanna do like this. You don't wanna subscribe and then you have to make sure you unsubscribe. You wanna use your async pipes, um, but figure it out. So what you should do is you should assign this variable here. So I wanna refactor that code and I know it turns it into the tree. I get that. But for now, I will remove it. And you see this piece of code? Well, why do I have it here? I don't need it. I can just remove it. And then I can just remove this one as well. And that's all you need. I mean, this is, this is reactive way. Uh, well, so far doesn't really show much. It's, um, but normally, I would like to subscribe to it inside of my component as well. So I think it, let's just do like this and say I think that will show it. Okay, we have a bit of a fail. Oh yeah, it's because I think pipe is part of I believe it's a common module. Um let me see. Is it browser module? I never remember those things. No. Okay. Let me let me figure it out real quick. Mm. 
Maybe it's a karma thing. Yeah, we still fail. Let me let me Google it real quick. There ain't nothing bad about it. 